Since the spectacular explosion of a star was photographed by astronomers on February 24, 1987, scientists have been looking for the shattered stellar core that would have been left behind. It may have been found at last by a team of astronomers collected data from NASA space missions and ground-based telescopes. Supernova 1987A, or SN 1987A for short, excited scientists greatly since it was the first supernova seen with the naked human eye in almost 400 years. It quickly rose to the top of the list of the most researched astrophysical phenomena. Only roughly 170,000 light years from Earth, the supernova may be found in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a tiny neighbor galaxy to the Milky Way. Intriguing new evidence for the existence of the neutron star at the center of SN 1987A is now presented by data from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, previously unpublished data from NASA's Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, also known as NUSTAR, in addition to data from the Grand Base Atacama Large Millimeter Array, also known as ULNA, reported last year. Astronomers have been searching through the stellar debris of SN 1987A for the expected neutron star for 34 years. There have been many clues that have proven to be false, but we believe our most recent findings may be different. What is the blob? The missing neutron star following the explosion was recently discovered for the first time thanks to studies made with the Ulmer Radio Telescope. High resolution photos showed a hot blob that is brighter than its surroundings and resembles the position of the neutron star in the dusty core of SN 1987A. A dense cloud of dust created this heated blob in the supernova remnant, which caught astronomers off guard. Something in the cloud must have heated up the dust and caused it to shine. Astronomers proposed that a neutron star may be concealed inside the dust cloud. Before researchers released a study indicating that the neutron star can really be this bright since it is so very young, it was previously believed that the neutron star could be too bright to live not a black hole or a pulsar. Contrary to popular belief, the neutron star probably isn't a pulsar. A pulsar's power relies on how quickly it spins and how strong its magnetic field is. Both would need to have extremely fine-tuned levels to match the measurements. But the thermal energy released by the hot surface of the newborn neutron star naturally matches the data. The neutron star performs exactly as predicted. These neutrinos showed that a black hole never formed, and a black hole also seemed unable to account for the blob's measured brightness. After weighing all the options, astronomers came to the conclusion that a hot neutron star is the most probable cause. This ultra-dense matter neutron star is a 25-kilometer diameter, extremely hot ball. Its content would weigh more per teaspoon than all of New York City's buildings put together. It seems to be 33 years old, making it the youngest neutron star ever discovered. The 330-year-old Cassiopeia A supernova remnant is home to the second youngest neutron star that we are aware of. Only a direct image of the neutron star might provide conclusive evidence that it is real, but scientists may have to wait a few more decades until the dust and gas in the supernova remnant grow more transparent before they can do that. Before the outer layers are sent into space during a stellar explosion, the star collapses in on itself. The Sun's mass is contained into an entity that is just 10 miles wide due to the core's compression, making it an extremely dense object. Because they are composed almost entirely of tightly packed neutrons, these objects have been given the name neutron stars. They are unmatched laboratories for extreme physics. Pulsars are neutron stars that rotate quickly and have a strong magnetic field. They emit a beam of radiation that resembles a lighthouse and that astronomers may detect as pulses when the revolution sweeps the beam across the sky. The term pulsar wind nebulae refers to the complex patterns of charged particles and magnetic fields produced by a subgroup of pulsars that generate winds from their surfaces, sometimes at speeds that are almost as fast as light. In the cooling period after supernova 1987A, Two previously undiscovered molecules, formelium and sulfur monoxide, were discovered. Along with these newly discovered molecules, previously known compounds including carbon monoxide and silicon oxide were also present. 
According to the researchers, just a handful out of every million carbon atoms are detected in formelium molecules, while around 1 in 1,000 silicon atoms from the shattered star may be identified in silicon oxide molecules. It was previously believed that whatever molecules and dust that may have already been there would be utterly destroyed by the powerful explosions of supernovae. The discovery of these surprising molecules does, however, imply that the violent death of stars may result in clouds of molecules and dust at very low temperatures, which are comparable to those found in a stellar nursery where stars are created. This challenges our long-held beliefs that these explosions completely eliminate all molecules and dust existing within a star, since it is the first time we have discovered these sorts of molecules inside supernovae. Our findings indicate that the many heavy elements that are created may start to shelter rich molecules when the supernova remnant gas starts to cool down to below 200 degrees Celsius, resulting in the creation of a dust factory. The fact that this factory of wealthy molecules is often located in environments where stars are formed is what surprises us the most. Therefore, the birth of a new generation may result from the demise of huge stars. By probing the center of supernova 1987A in amazingly fine detail using Ulmer, the team was able to reach its conclusions. Supernova 1987A has been under research by astronomers for more than 30 years, yet it has been challenging to analyze the supernova's deepest core. In order to examine the amount and position of the newly produced molecules, Olna had to be able to see at millimeter wavelengths a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum between infrared and radio radiation. The researchers discovered relatively low energy X-rays from SN 1987A debris colliding with nearby material using Chandra and New Star. Using the capability of New Star to detect higher energetic X-rays, the researchers also discovered evidence of high energy particles. Astronomers predicted that a neutron star had formed in the collapsing core of the star because neutrinos were discovered on Earth on the day of the explosion. But after discovering no trace of that star, researchers began to question if maybe it had instead crashed into a black hole. The scientific world has been anxiously anticipating a signal from this asteroid, which has been shrouded in a very dense cloud of dust for decades. Both the pulsar wind nebula and particles being pushed to high energies by the blast wave of the explosion are possible causes of this powerful X-ray emission. The latter impact spreads out across considerably greater distances from the explosion's core and doesn't need the existence of a pulsar. By making many arguments against the theory of blast wave acceleration, the most recent X-ray investigation strengthens the case for the pulsar wind nebula, proving that the neutron star must be there. First, between 2012 and 2014, the radio emission observed by the Australia Telescope Compact Array rose while the brightness of the higher energy X-rays stayed relatively constant. For the blast wave scenario, this goes against what is expected. Next, the scientists calculate that it would take about 400 years, more than 10 times as long as the age of the remnant, for the electrons to accelerate to the greatest energy seen in the new star data. Astronomers have questioned whether SN1987A produced a black hole or whether not enough time had elapsed for a pulsar to emerge. This has been a mystery for some time, therefore we are thrilled to have fresh knowledge to share with the community with this finding. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.